Hey guys, I got a new pen. G'day everyone, I'm Jazza, and every now and then I've seen like these calligraphy videos or like line art videos floating around the place or GIFs where they use this weird looking glass dip pen thing. This is my go-to set of pencils and pens and all that. And I have three preferred methods of creating lines. Let me just grab them here. First is a fine line. Pretty straightforward, it's still felt tip, so there's a little bit of give, so you can do some finer lines and then you can also do some thicker lines. Then we have the brush pen. The flexibility is amazing. Amazing! Oh, it feels so good. This is the uh, Tombow WSBH 150. It gives you that control, but it also gives you a little bit of that flexibility. That rubber feeling, almost like a plastic tip, gives me that control that I want when I want to do outlines and thin lines like that. But it also allows me to do thicker outlines and do some really expressive line work as well. And I've seen this thing around and I have no idea what the go is, but it's made of glass. So I can't imagine it's gonna be all that flexible, but look at it. I wanted to try it to see what the deal is, see if there are pros and cons and see if I hate it or if I love it. This could be my new favorite thing. I mean, it looks cool. So I bought this kit of stuff. I don't know what this is. That's what this video is. We've got the whole setup here. Look at this nice little, little, little you can take some shots while you draw with your, this is the dip thing, the, the ink well, and it comes with some inks here. Hippopotamus is a large mammal of hippopotamus. Freshwater species. The f What do you mean? There's this ink, ink. African ostrich is the only species of ostrich and also the representative of the bird. What the hell is this? It's got like shiny stuff on the inside. I feel like I need to shake it. Do this pro move. Shake all four at once. <laughs> so these are well and <laughs> truly mixed now. And as you can see, they've taken on a more consistent color, but they definitely have some sort of magical properties that we're going to want to explore. All right, so let's turn over a new page here and let's start off with a little bit of a dabble of everything that came in the package that I purchased. Ooh, I missed one thing. Look at this. That's going to be for transferring the ink to the inkwell. Let's take a pick. What do we got? Let's start off with something more boring, shall we? Camel. Ha! <laughs> Bleh! Let's just start off with a shallow dip and see if that's enough. Whoa. Whoa. What I'm surprised by is that I'm not re-dipping. Whoa! Why? How long is this going to go? That long. Okay. I do find that impressive. You can see there are some thinner bits and thicker bits, and it might be due to the angle of the pen or due to the pr pr pressure against the paper. I have no idea. <laughs> Let's fill this up a bit more, shall we? All right, started. Obviously, the uh, the line's a bit thicker there because I can't control the ink flow, but I'm just gonna, just gonna do this for a while and see how long I've got. Still going. So now obviously we're starting to fade out. That's when it started to dry up a bit. So I've done calligraphy before in a previous video and that was something that did sort of get on my nerves a little bit is how much you have to re-dip. So maybe that's the whole point of this pen because as you can see, it's got these glass grooves that swirl all the way around and I'm assuming when you're holding it upright, they're sort of holding in the ink from just dropping down. And then as you draw, gravity is just pulling the rest of that ink down. I didn't know what the point was. It turns out there's a point. It just, keep, it just keeps giving and giving and giving. Oh, wow. <coughs> New page. All right, so we have three more inks to try. We have hippopotamus, ostrich, and giraffe. And I think rather than just draw scribbly lines, which I'm sure you found thoroughly entertaining and enjoyable so far, I'm going to sketch, you guessed it, Ta-da! Editing made it a lot faster. Okay, we have the hippo on the left here. So I'm gonna open the hippo ink and we'll uh, see how well they complement each other. Now, I'm pretty aware this might be specifically for calligraphy. I could be wrong. I haven't looked it up. Probably should have. Way, actually, that's a pretty nice blue ink there. How is it for filling in solid areas? Not too bad. The fact that this is all still one dip, it's pretty mighty impressive. I'm gonna be honest, it's not the most comfortable drawing experience. The feeling of the glass sort of scraping the paper, not something I'm yet familiar with. See how it goes filling in a large area of ink. Oh my God, I did the whole hippo in two dips. I did one dip for the line and then another dip for the shading. I got the whole thing done. Line shading is uh, is actually 
like pretty pretty nice, pretty satisfying. I am genuinely blown away. That's a two dip drawing right there. Now obviously I could have done that with a traditional fine liner or ink pen without any dipping. Is that a big deal? Maybe, I mean, if you like using fancy inks, obviously if you wanted to, to do this in different inks, normally you would have to have different pens, but in this case, you could get your sort of fancy different inks and have one pen. So there's a benefit there. The other benefit is, I mean, look at this thing. It's glorious. Moving on now, we're going to be drawing the ostrich with the ostrich ink. This is a bit more of a mix between a purple and a mauve. The other thing I'm noting is, I mean, I'm very heavy handed when I draw, but my lines tend to be very thick and using an instrument like this really does not only limit how thick I can draw lines, but it actually forces me to press lighter. So if you want to teach yourself to have a lighter hand when drawing, I mean, maybe that's, that's an added benefit. Because the reality is for someone like me who is very heavy handed, if I use like a very thin fine liner, like a 0.1 or a 0.05, I have been known to wreck them very quickly because I can't help but press firmly when I draw. Whereas with this thing, if I actually did that, I would probably break the pen. Oh, this is intense. Can I do it? Can this be a two dip drawing too? Oh my God. It's like we've hit a second wind. The ink reserves have arrived. Oh, wow. What an adventure that was. A two dip drawing again. Ha. Still got it. All right, what's next? Giraffe, which to me looks like a um, vermilion. This is almost like a golden color. This is still my first dip, people. Oh my God. I'm gonna see how solid I can shade in the main with the last of my glass pen. What is that? Is that a bit of glass? Did I break it? I don't think so. Is it a bit of paper? Yeah, I'm scratching up the paper. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do Two dips it is. There's obviously only so far you can push it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and push my second dip pretty far. See if I can shade in his whole mane in a solid color. I certainly feel like I'm pushing this thing to its limits, but I think I'm gonna get there. I got there. I did it. I fit. I two dips. Look at that. Okay. Well. Color me impressed, or at the very least, color me ostrich. So there it is. I am thoroughly impressed with the lack of dipping needed, but the lack of flexibility isn't my favorite thing. But I'm gonna come back to this in a moment and directly compare it with an illustration that I'm gonna do two versions of, my usual ink pens and this thing, just to directly compare the experience and also the results. But before we do that, let's do a little bit of research in this video. What is the name of that glass pen thingy? Glass dipping pens are not just fine writing instruments, but often works of art that allow a pen aficionado to truly express their inner personality. Uh oh. <laughs> Many use them for sketching as well. Okay. Right, so coming back to my illustration, the ink should have well and truly dried. I'm just going to uh, see if I can erase the sketch underneath normally. No. No, I can't. Okay. Well, that limits the, my sketching options. <laughs> it only smeared in like the, the thick sections. Unless I just draw really thin, then erase my sketches and then go in and add more ink. I think that might be my only option. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. But anyways, without any further ado, I'm going to pit the glass dip pen against the reliable ink pens I rely on with all of my illustration in a direct comparison of aesthetic creating the same illustration. I'm gonna draw them side by side, first with my go-tos and then with the glass pen and just share my experience and some of the pros and cons. And obviously as a result, we'll be able to see what the outcome of both of these looks like directly compared to one another. So I thought it'd be fun to draw two characters facing each other, twinsies maybe, or clones. I don't know, I didn't come up with the story. But basically I wanted to try and effectively face off the two pen slash ink styles against each other. And I thought the best way to do that would be with some sort of mirror image. I just went about this with my usual inking methods, starting off after my sketch, of course, using my go-to midpoint fine liner. So the one that had that little bit of a flexible tip so I could get some line weight variation. I had some line shading with a simple 0.4 fine liner, and then I filled in larger areas of ink with my brush pen. Now on to the mirror image. And this is where things get a little different. <laughs> First of all, it's very smudgy. Uh, it is a dip pen after all, so you're working with ink and it takes longer to dry. But then on top of that, with the lack of proper line weight variation or responsiveness with a very solid glass nib, it was a pretty uncomfortable drawing experience. 
I don't know, I wouldn't opt for this over like my normal go-to pens, but it was pretty fun to use. And I think I should address some of the pros in here. And that really is sort of learning to use an ink medium and something that is a little more traditional and provided something where I could experience a process that I wasn't used to. So while being a challenge, I, I felt like I could learn a lot working with this thing as well. I think the, the glass dip pen thing is uh, as much for the, the joy of the aesthetic of the pen itself as it is for actually being used. So I'm not entirely sure it's meant to be the most practical pen in the world, but I gave it the good old college try in my less experienced dipping pen hands and I, I was pretty happy with the result. I tried to mix in some of the other colors that came with the pen and yeah I don't know it, it got a bit messy and probably was a bit over the top but hey it's fun and that's what this is all about. So this is the result of my experiment. On the left, we have the reliable hero, our uh, our go-to ink pens, and then on the right, the I guess we could say unexpected um, character antagonist. I don't know what it is that I drew here. I just tried to use all of the inks. I think it's probably messier than I would have liked, but I don't know how to use this thing. So I think this is, I could definitely learn to use it better, but I have learned about some of its pros and cons. The pros, of course, are the things that I've mentioned, that for a dip ink pen, it, it's got some good longevity. And also the, uh, the lack of flexibility does provide, I, I guess, a, a really reliable, clean line for the most part. Of course, the cons is that there's a lack of flexibility, but you know, let's let's call it for what it is. The biggest pro and the biggest reason you want to get one of these things is because it's shiny. Either way, it's been a learning experience. I am unfamiliar with it, so obviously it's not the best result in the world, but it's cool to compare to what I know and am familiar with, and I'm interested in your thoughts. What could I be doing differently, those of you who have experience with this thing, and maybe what should I try if I were to do something super ambitious in a big artwork if I came back and revisited this thing. Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, of course, go on and hit that subscribe button so you can have more fun with art and creativity and play with new fun art creative things with me in future. We do all sorts of fun and creative things on this channel and I don't really know what they are until I start making the next video. And that's most of the fun of it. <laughs> and I hope you've had fun with me here today. I did enjoy myself. I think there's a lot I can learn with this thing, of course, but I think the most important thing was go. It's pretty. Make sure to hit the like button if you did enjoy this video, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, you're probably going to enjoy some of the other videos on my channel over there, so go check them out. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later.